So welcome uh, everyone uh, and thanks to the uh, Institution of Mechanical Engineers to host our webinar uh, today, uh, which is on how Formula student teams excel with Siemens Digital Industries uh, software. Uh, so for the next 50 minutes, uh, you will hear about the Siemens, the Siemens Academy program, uh, examples from uh, teams of how they use various uh, system uh, software, uh, battery X, so leveraging experiments, system simulation, and CFD uh, for battery thermal management of race cars. And then Sim Center Star System Plus walkthrough on a Formula student car. And at the end, we'll open up the floor um, for your questions. We really value your comments or your input. So while we are presenting, please drop your question uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the box. And um, we'll try to address them today. If we'll uh, run out of time, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll follow up uh, later on. So who will be the speakers of today? Uh, there is me. Um, I am Virginia Fratellocchi and I'll be moderating uh, this webinar and also talk to you uh, about the Siemens uh, Academy program. Uh, I am a pre-sale solution consultant in the uh, Siemens Center uh, CFD team. I joined Siemens um, almost five years uh, ago and I'm based in, uh, in London. Uh, then we'll have Chris Penny. Uh, so Christopher oversees engagement with student uh, competition teams in the Americas. And for the past uh, eight years and a half, he's been supporting FS and FSE um, teams, uh, also producing amazing material uh, and tutorials for Sim Center Star System Plus, Sim Center Amazon, and Sim Center uh, 3D. Uh, the next speaker uh, will be Thomas News, uh, and um, he um, will give you a testimonial of the Battery X. He was, in fact, a student team uh, Accurate X from 2017 to uh, 2020. And um, after graduating from Haken University, he's now doing his PhD um, in the battery system department at Male. He will uh, share the floor with uh, Christopher Helbig. Uh, Christopher has been working as a pre-sale solution consultant as well uh, um, in the um, uh, system uh, simulation. And uh, he has a Master of Science in uh, Energy uh, Engineering from the uh, Technical University of Hamburg. And last but for sure not least, uh, we have David Penner, who is a master's student um, at University of Toronto U Institute for aerospace uh, studies uh, and he will take off for his next adventure at F1 after summer. Um, so let's get into it. Um, the Siemens academic program. I will give you um, a very uh, short overview um, because I don't have too much time now uh, of the resources that we have available for students and educators. So let me start with the um, how to get access to the software. Uh, there are some, uh, there are usually two ways uh, that a university or a department or a group can get access to the uh, Sim Center um, uh, portfolio. So through a normal uh, sales process that could be initiated by Siemens or your academic institution, but also through uh, a grant application uh, that uh, you see here uh, in this slide. Um, so this form is usually filled by an educator, but in case of uh, student uh, teams uh, competition, uh, you will be able uh, to own uh, this form as long as it's um, linked to a legal entity, which in this case uh, is your um, uh, team. Um, when you have access to the uh, software, uh, there is also um, the support uh, that, of course, comes with it. Uh, so let's have a look at, um, at the content. You will have access with a valid license to the support uh, center. And in the support center, you will have different um, admin capabilities in case you are an educator or a student. Um, so what can you find in the support center? And in this case, as you see, the example is for Sim Center Star System Plus, uh, but um, it will apply to any, uh, to any product. 
Um, you will find the getting started, so material that is suitable uh, to a new uh, user. Uh, then you will have the learn and explore tab in which you can find tutorials, webinars, best practices, and also access to the Accelerator Academy, uh, which is our learning uh, platform. And I will talk about that uh, later. Then the knowledge base, which is a repository of resources available uh, to the user and the download uh, session. So in here, you can actually download uh, the uh, software that you're going uh, that you're going to use. Uh, the, Simcent, the Siemens community uh, is an additional uh, external resources uh, that you have in which you can find additional uh, knowledge articles and also uh, a forum to interact with other students or with uh, Siemens um, uh, engineers. Now, regarding the Accelerator Academy, this is just um, a teaser for you. Uh, so the Accelerator Academy is a learning platform that you can find um, instructor-led training and also uh, on-demand training library. So when we talk about on-demand training library, uh, those are videos and step-by-step -step instructions. Um, they can be accessed uh, for free to any institution that has an active licenses and it provides a 24 uh, hour per seven on-demand access uh, to self-paced learning content. Then you also have the instructor-led training. Uh, this is a region and topic-based uh, scheduling system. Uh, the university admin can uh, sign up the students uh, for the classes um, or PhD or researchers. And uh, it is free uh, for the academia on the condition of available uh, seats. Um, now to conclude, uh, I wanted to... Um, uh, to share uh, a not so top secret uh, secret. So uh, this has been going around uh, for some time now. And um, we have a free student edition of Sim Center Star System Plus, which is soon to be uh, released. Uh, I am going to uh, drop uh, the link of the uh, grant um, academic program uh, in the chat. Um, so for you to, uh, uh, to keep it. And uh, with that, I am going to um, uh, give the floor uh, to Chris. Thank you so much. All right, now I'm going to start the sharing. All right, perfect. So um, I'm going to go over a few case studies, uh, starting off with uh, aerodynamics. Um, we have the uh, University of Central Florida formula team. Um, they set out to develop their first aero error package. And to, uh, to do this, they used a combination of imported CAD and parametric CAD built within Star System Plus, uh, which was connected directly to the simulation process so that if they wanted to make a change to something on the CAD, they can make a change and within seconds start a new simulation. And after converging on an aero layout, uh, they fine tune the positioning of their wings by using built-in automated design exploration. So after a, a day on 128 core cluster, uh, 500 additional cases were run and then downforce was increased by another 5%. The result is that in one year, a thousand models were simulated and they produced a leading aero package for that year. Uh, teams like the University of Manitoba evaluate unsteady aerodynamics in the software as well, such as the simulation to understand the performance of their drag reduction system. Uh, similarly, the team at RWTH Aachen uh, studied how the vehicle behaves when accelerating from the start line. Uh, this article done in collaboration with Queen's University uh, shows how to set up CFD car cornering simulation in SimCenter Star System Plus. Uh, here's feedback from McGill on how they've benefited from the software. What Star CCM Plus offers that allows us to achieve, to meet these challenges and achieve our goals is an integrated solution. All of those methods, we meant, uh, all of those different components I mentioned before, the modeling, mesh application, solver, and post-processing are all available in one software package. This means we don't have to spend time converting our design between the different, uh, different processes there which we estimate in total just for our dynamics package saves us around 50 hours of time every year. This, uh, this time is not just spent sitting, sitting idly and our team is able to put this to use to actually improve our design in other ways and to do a more in-depth dive into some of the things we weren't able to focus on before. Using this, we were able to increase over our previous year 
um, the straight line downforce of our car by 12% and decrease the straight line drag of our car by 4% while increasing the cornering downforce by 19% and decreasing the drag by 1%. And most other Formula teams I encounter are already using uh, Sim Center Star System Plus uh, for the aforementioned reasons and for our great technical resources. Uh, moving on to uh, CAD, uh, these teams explain the returns that they've seen by uh, switching over to our software. So some of the benefits that NX has provided us is increased CAD stability. This is something that has really, really helped us um, in the past. Particularly, NX has a great ability to identify uh, errors that, that come up when, when loading our CAD. So we, we estimate we save about 20 hours per design cycle. Whenever these errors uh, present themselves, NX is very, very good at helping us isolate the problem and either fixing or destroying the problem so that we can move on with our design. Furthermore, we have industry leading service tools in NX, and this is particularly valuable for any of our composite chassis and our composite aero package. And the software at help itself is focused around sheet body manipulation, whereas other competitors are focused around solid body manipulation. Siemens NX's ability to handle large and complex assemblies was a huge advantage over other tools. Not only is NX able to handle large assemblies, but it has also allowed the two schools, Oregon State and DHBW Robinsburg, to in parallel edit parts and collaborate effectively and efficiently. The key to being a winning Formula student team is keeping your CAD structure effectively organized, efficient, and stable. We are able to keep our file structure secure and sustainable through the use of version control and advanced permission management, as well as using detailed tutorials during our onboarding process. Not only do we train our, all of our students to use Siemens NX to the team standard, but we also ensure specific settings are automatically set through the use of the bash file that not only opens the program, but also loads all the correct settings. Siemens NX makes organization and CAD structuring simplistic and easy to understand, not only for new, but also returning members of the team. With associated features within NX, we are able to save over 15 hours trying to fix inconsistencies through our large and complex CAD assembly. 30 hours have been saved using built-in advanced modeling features such as electrical or mechanical routing with an addition of 40 plus hours saved using the integration between other software packages. Not to mention NX has saved countless hours coordinating international design work regarding platform compatibility within one CAD model. Okay, and moving into FEA. So the analyst handoff, this is something that really, really helps us when it comes to a mechanical part design. The seamless integration between NX and SimCenter allows us to transfer very quickly parts from the CAD environments to the finite element modeling environments and then to the simulation environments. We, we estimate that this saves us about 10 minutes per iteration of parts compared to having to export a file into an intermediate form such as STEP, Parasolid, um, et cetera, into another software and then reverting back to the, to the modeling environment. So for us, we see this ends up being about a total time save of about 40 hours per design cycle. All right, now formula teams like uh, McGill and GFR Racing use uh, FiberSim for composites throughout the car. Uh, for example, GFR used FiberSim to make their nose cone, which would have been quite difficult to achieve due to its shape. Uh, this would have required test layups and additional carbon cover-up imperfections. Uh, FiberSim simplifies the design and manufacture of complex curved parts like this, where the laminate can be designed quickly and the material behavior can be simulated to achieve success the first time. They found that they could develop precise flat patterns and maintain part accuracy where the ply edges were within half a millimeter of the mold, which eliminated the need for adding ply patches. So the entire kit, two complete layers of material was exported from FiberSim and cut in less than one minute and the layup was done in two hours. Uh, GFR also used FiberSim to design their composite wheel layup, which has over 200 plies. They found that their layup process went from 18 hours to nine hours by predict, uh, predicting manufacturing challenges. Uh, they generated uh, accurate fly pat, uh, flat patterns and cutting uh, the material went from two hours down to 15 minutes by sending the, those uh, flat patterns directly to the CNC ply cutter. 
So when they use fiber sim to make 24 wheel rims, altogether they save 258 hours of time. McGill also expands on their use here. So FiberSim itself is a, is a very innovative product that we, we've used to our advantage in the past few years of manufacturing a carbon fiber monocrop. So some of the challenges that we face in this design tend to be just how intricate our laminate design is. So here on the bottom left picture, you'll see this is how many different uh, ply zones or laminate zones, as we call them, we have throughout the chassis. In total, there is 364 individual plies varying of up to three different materials placed in varying patterns with varying overlaps throughout the entire chassis. It's very complex. And in fact, it takes about three weeks of around the clock uh, time manu to manufacture a full chassis of this size. So what happens is on the right here, you can see this is a unidirectional fiber tape. And what happens is when you're placing these with more manual techniques, you end up getting splitting of the fibers and then your, your total parts does not react as how you designed it to be. So this is one of the major challenges that not only the automotive industry, but any industry that's using pre preg composites are facing right now. So how FiberSim actually helps us is through three main ways. They have an automated ply sequencing book. So I mentioned we have that 364 plies. Well, FiberSim allows us to orient them within the software and then automatically generate an instruction manual on how to assemble that. The instruction manual can be customized to be very clear and very um, user friendly, such that anyone who is not familiar with the design can easily manufacture this chassis. As well as some benefits we've seen in the past few years is in the manufacturability analysis with the relief cut simulation. Just referring back to the previous slide where I said there was that crack or that break in the unidirectional fiber tape, uh, we, can, we can now analyze that within the software itself and place strategic relief cuts that will uh, allow the fibers to drape through complex geometries much easier and will still get a very reliable parts and save a lot of time in manufacturing. Another. Um, moving into uh, wire harness. So in Visas, the software, uh, the workflow starts out pretty similarly, discussing the wiring requirements, creating a first iteration schematic, and so on. And then at the same time as we're doing that, we're able to, of course, wrote wire pass in Siemens NX. But the difference here is we're able to connect that Visas wiring uh, schematic to the wire pass in NX. And then once we're ready to import our wires over to uh, our MCAD, we simply have to route the wires automatically in NX, a process that takes us around 10 minutes, which is a huge amount of time saved compared to that 15 hours estimate from previously. This also means that when we do make design changes, although it does take us time to update the schematics, we're saving around two hours every time by not having to change the wire routing automatically in NX. And the other benefit of this uh, workflow is that because the wires are routed automatically, we only have to check our schematics for errors. We don't have to check both our schematics and our um, wire routing in NX. And then we generate foam boards and ready to manufacture, which we estimate from um, inception to a manufacturable product is around a 45 hour workflow. The key here is that integration that Visas provides us with NX. This is not something we had with Visio, and it's something that has made our design a lot easier, saved us a lot of time, and also made us more confident that our design is errorless. This ends up taking our design time down from 80 hours to 45. Now, there are a couple of other benefits that come with this, starting off with, the des with design time, as I mentioned earlier, but also cost. Being able to be certain that there are less errors in our harness allows us to uh, spend or use less material without having to change things as well. Because we have uh, more time to work on our design, we're saving time in that, that uh, routing step of the wires, we're able to um, focus on our wiring and our connector choices a little bit more um, to ensure that we're purchasing the small, uh, the least we have to, which we estimate enables us to save around $550 every year. Uh, for similar purposes, we're able to lose weight um, because we're able to spend more time focusing on these smaller things. Um, and also, with, you know, this isn't directly a visa's impact, but because of NX, we're able to route the wires in the NCAD to ensure that when we do cut them, we're only cutting the length we need and we don't have to cut any extra to be uh, you know certain we're getting that right length and finally manufacturing time as i mentioned before we're able to be a lot more certain that our harness has less errors and 
spend more time focusing on just one source of error as the schematic. Um, this allows us to have a harness design that is uh, error-free in manufacturing, which saves us a lot of time that we would usually spend fixing uh, the few errors that, do, that we do find and that do come up as we're writing out those wires. There's also some uh, other, other features of pieces that we're planning on using in the future, uh, the big one being the BOM integration. We also plan on using some electrical simulation that Visus offers to ensure that our wires are connected properly and that our harness has uh, the electrical characteristics we expect. And this will feed back in, into our design validation. We're able to make changes regarding the electrical characteristics of our harness before we build it, before we test it. This will allow us to be certain that when we do manufacture our harness and we go to plug in all our devices, everything is going to behave exactly as we expected. Now, uh, moving into uh, powertrain, uh, ECL talks here about how the UVS uh, Sim Center aims him to gain uh, five horsepower in their engine. We decided to modelize our engine uh, with uh, an LMS MSIM model. We wanted to simulate the um, acoustics of the engine, more precisely in the intake and exhaust areas. So uh, we realized two models, a zero-D interior engine model and a 1D model of the, the pipes. Uh, we used uh, several libraries, but mainly we used uh, the uh, IFP and IFP drive and IFP engine and uh, CFD 1D uh, libraries. And thanks to uh, this uh, LMS MC model, uh, we uh, could predict uh, the performance of our uh, engine and thus the performance of our racing car. Uh, an article was developed in collaboration with uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo to show others uh, how to set up and validate both a radiator and fan uh, in SimCenter Star CCM Plus. Uh, then that setup, setup was used to explore different uh, radiator and fan configurations, such as uh, opening sizes and their effect on mass flow, uh, radiator angles, fan shroud changes, including exploring how removing a fan affects mass flow, a short duct versus no duct, and other considerations. Uh, and moving into tire modeling as a final category. So there's like two functionalities that uh, Gisopher is bringing that we did not have before. So first, SimCenter MF Tire can model, model loaded and inductive radius. Uh, so it helps better predict our tire slip ratio and longitudinal uh, forces for a given motor torque. And the other functionality is uh, that it can give the tire relax relaxation length which improves uh, our control system design um, and robustness. All right, and that's it for me. Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, so now uh, we can go to our next presenter, Thomas and Christopher. All right, uh, thank you, Virginia. Uh, so I'm going to talk about Battery X. And Battery X is a multidisciplinary approach for the electrical and thermal characterization of battery packs. And um, just to say, it's not just um, Christopher Helbig and me um, today who are presenting today. It's also Fabian Boom, Felix Diepers, Otta Gisterson, and Claudio Santorelli. That is um, the whole team. So what is the motivation behind Battery X? Um, batteries and battery thermal management systems play a huge role in today's e-mobility. And especially the battery system development requires deep understanding of those um, lithium-ion cells, and we know they all um, behave quite complex. So to gain the required knowledge, we need experiments and we need simulations. So our idea is to have an electrothermal co-simulation method for battery packs. And we wanted to combine the capabilities of computational fluid dynamics, system simulations, by at the same time efficiently integrate experimental data. And with that, we wanted to address um, uh, things like cooling system dimension, optimal packaging, battery integration, energy efficiency, range requirements, and, um, and stuff like that. So what are we looking at? Um, so here's our case study. At first, we have the battery system of the electric formula student car EACE09 of AcuraX. And then we look at the endurance race, which is 22 kilometers long, from the formula student Germany in Hockenheim. There we recorded the current profile and the cell temperatures. So with our electrothermal models that we want to develop, 
that we then want to analyze the battery behavior a posteriori with the recorded parent, parent profile. We could then verify our simulation model with the recorded cell temperatures. But um, the most important point is to pr predict the battery behavior for other operating points like higher ambient temperatures or adjustments of the battery thermal management system or even a failure or what we have H um, cells, we know that H cells behave differently. So we could um, then predict the behavior in these operating points. Let's now have a look at the uh, battery pack. We have a lithium ion pouch cells of elastic. We have high power cells in there. They can uh, have a 15 C max continuous current. We have an LCO chemistry, 5.6 ampere hours capacity. And we put, put those into the next bigger element, which is the cell stack. In the cell stack, we have a 12 S to P configuration, which makes 24 cells each. And we have also parts like BMS slave, measurement PCBs, and cooling fins in the stack. And you can see on the middle right picture, this is um, the container in the top view, how the stacks are arranged. We have 12 of those stacks. And that makes a 144 S2P configuration. So all the stacks are connected in series. We have 288 cells in total. That gives us um, roughly six kilowatt hours of energy, and we can pull out a maximum power output of 80 kilowatts. And this is limited by the functional rules. So let's have a look at the thermal management system. We have three fans at the back of the container and they provide a constant air mass flow over the cooling fins. And the cooling fins, they are connected to the cell tabs. So we're not cooling the cell surface, but the, um, the cell tabs. So now, how are we going to proceed? Here's our method workflow. We um, define four actions. Action four is the experimental cell measurement and then the parameter identification for the advanced equivalent circuit model, which uh, then um, it replicates the, the battery behavior. Action two is the setup of the system simulation model for the battery pack in SimCenter Amazon. Action three is then to export the system simulation model at a functional mockup unit with a functional mockup interface standard. We will come to that later. And action four is then the coupling of the system simulation model with the CFD model by importing the FMU in the fully resolved conjugate heat transfer simulation in starts to see plus. And now Chris is going to um, describe all the actions, action four, one to four in detail. Thanks, Thomas. All right. Yeah, let's have a look, a closer look at action one, namely the cell characterization and uh, the workflow from test measurements to parameterized model. So the very first step is to generate a test profile, current profile, which is then applied to the cells on a test bench. And with the help of the measurement data, uh, parameter identification can be performed. Um, here in our case, it's thanks to the battery identification toolbox um, shipping with SimCenter Amosum. And as an output, we get the parameters which uh, describe the behavior in an equivalent circuit model. So as mentioned, the very first step is to create test profiles and this based on information from the cell. So taking into account some minimum maximum values for voltage, currents, or also the nominal capacity and to create uh, current profiles. And with these profiles, we set up a test bench in a climatic chamber and applied these current profiles at different temperatures to cover a wide range of temperatures and uh, potential operating ranges. And what we measured is, yeah, um, predominantly the temperature of the cell and also the voltage response um, due to the current measured in the cell. And with this result from the measurements, we can feed the parameter identification toolbox in AMISM. So the measurement test can be used to feed and serve as an input for the battery identification toolbox, which we may consider here as a, as a black box. And as an output, we get the parameterization describing the cell behavior and getting data such as the open circuit voltage or ohmic resistance and others. 
And when applying the parameters to the cell model, um, we can we can use it in a broader sense and to use it in a stack model. Um, so as an output of this first action, we received a single cell model, which thermally and electrically behaves like the cell on the test bench. And um, yeah, as a evidence for this, um, we can see here on the right, the comparison of the measured voltage and the simulated results, which are very well in line. So departing from this single cell, we then put multiple instances of the cell into the configuration we have in the car. So connecting them electrically uh, accordingly, and then to have this cell stack and using multiple instances of the cell stack, we can then build the battery pack. And on the system simulation level, we stick to the cell stack, which we will describe here on the next slide. So at the bottom part, you see 12 parallel cell pairs connected in series, comprising yeah, the, the, the cell stack. In brown, you see thermal adapters allowing the exchange of the quantity seed flow rate and temperature for each cell pair. And um, yeah, in order to verify that the stack model behaves as expected, we apply current profiles, similarly to the uh, test case in the test bench. And um, in this setups, still, we are um, simulating in a kind of open loop uh, setup, since the heat flow rate is um, yeah, transmitted into a signal sink, and we prescribe uh, constant temperatures. However, the goal is, of course, to create a closed loop. And this feedback and interaction um, between heat flow rates, dissipated heat, and the temperature influence on the electrical performance. And in order to do so, here we see the general setup or the, the, the link between our system simulation model covering the electrical aspects and the battery thermal model uh, built in Star System Plus and representing a CFD model. So from the electrical model, we output the heat flow rates, which then serve as an input for the battery thermal model. And in turn, the thermal model outputs the temperatures, which then is fed into the electrical model and this way closing the loop. And um, here we took advantage of the so-called function mockup interface, which is a free standard that allows the coupling of dynamic models. And in this case, we linked the system simulation with the CFD model. And more specifically, here in this case, the AMISA model has been exported as a functional mockup unit, which is characterizing the cell stack we've seen previously. This is exported and then imported into Star System Plus. And how to export it um, is shown here. It's actually a, yeah, a few clicks a process. It's basically that we just insert interface blocks which then establish yeah, the connection between the two tools. Here on the left, we see the current interface block to be able to apply different load cases. And in the center here, we see that the feedback is closed and the connection established between the heat flow rates and the temperatures. And how this looks like um, from the Star System Plus side and how to import this Amazon model, this is what Thomas will tell you now. Back to you, Thomas. All right. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, um, how to import the FMU into um, Star System Plus. We have our beloved um, Star System Plus simulation tree here. And um, with the option user libraries, you can just um, import the FMIs or FMUs by two clicks. So that's pretty easy. Uh, you can see here now S1 to S6. So we, so we have six um, separate FMUs representing um, a cell stack each. And um, for each FMU, and there's also a link created. So you can see here link S1, for example, and they can manage the exchange data, for example, like the time step or what values you want to track or export or interchange between the two simulation models. And that's how you set up the co-simulation. And during the co-simulation run, 
um, you can uh, you can watch the calculated values and um, the parameters of um, temperature and um, heat source are continuously exchanged between FMI uh, between CFD and system simulation by the FMU. So as we are used to, we have um, access to thermal quantities um, in CFD, like um, the average cell temperatures um, or the omic heating sources. Um, but you can now also investigate the electrical quantities, such as um, SOC or cell voltage during the race. So to sum it up, um, we presented a multidisciplinary approach um, for the electrical and thermal simulation of battery packs. And this is done by uh, combining experiments, system simulation, and CFD efficiently. Um, so this setup um, can now be used to analyze and optimize the current, but also future battery systems. And very important is um, the ongoing works um, because we now have the battery model and we can use it, for example, in lab time simulations or in a real time controller and many more options are possible. So with that, um, thank you for the attention. Thanks to the team and back to Virginia. Yes, thank you very much, Thomas and Christopher. Very interesting. Um, so we have many questions already. Um, so now uh, we can give the floor to David. And yeah, I hope uh, that the uh, there was some background noise. So I will encourage everyone to uh, uh, mute uh, themselves. Thanks. David, it's all yours. All right, can we see my screen? Yes. Okay, awesome. So yeah, so yeah, uh, hi, I'm David. Uh, as Virginia has already introduced, I'm a master's student at the University of Toronto, and I've been using CFD for within Star CM for about five years now. I'm going to cover a lot of the different powerful features for pre and post processing that I found that students aren't aware of um, in when I've talked about competitions. So first thing I want to do is talk about um, all sorts of different automation param and, and parameterization, and to the foundation of that is these simulation parameters that we have within Star CM Plus. Um, and these are the, the foundation for you know, proper automation. And here we can use them to parameterize all sorts of different things um, like the, uh, the radius, the corner radius, the corner direction, the ride heights, the roll, sides of the angle, whatever you want. First thing I'm going to use with that is automation of the domain creation of like a cornering uh, simulation domain uh, for a cornering case. So, to, use, to do that, I'm going to use uh, a 3D CAD within Star CM, which is a built-in uh, CAD package that can be used to create all sorts of um, CAD within Star CM for automation instead of having to import it from an external CAD package. So when I make this domain uh, for these cornering simulations, I it's 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 a revolve and it's a revolve operation with a cross section, and within there I can parameterize the domain cross section as well as the location of the corner center. And that's how I automatically import the, uh, the radius. And with there, you can also turn this into a, um, a straight line case as well. If you just set the radius to something extremely high, like say 500 meters, uh, you'll have maybe a, a third of a degree of a flow angle um, from deviation from a straight line case, but it's effectively a straight line case. And with that, you can also use the same simulation for symmetry cases by just having some if operations uh, in the parameterization of your domain cross section to say have the the dimension uh, of this line be uh, be zero uh, on your coordinate system uh, using some if operations and that can automatically cut away half your domain if you set a, one of those um, simulation parameters uh, flip that flag so I'm just going to close that Let's see what's next. And from there, uh, we can parameterize all sorts of things like yaw, pitch, and roll by using the simulation operations within the geometry tree. And with there, I will automatically start to see will automatically um, change the yaw, pitch, roll, and whatever arbitrary trans transformation that I've told it to do, um, which again avoids having to use external CAD that I found people have had to do for changing things like ride heights of their car. Uh, with that, 
if you're moving the tires, you have to have a coordinate system that automatically tracks these tires, for example, for things like a rotating reference frame. Um, with that, you can also have a 3D CAD uh, for, for coordinate systems for all of your tires, replicate all of those different geometry operations, and automatically export coordinate systems um, for your different tire locations that can be used for rotating reference frames. Before I go on to some of the post-processing um, features, I'd like to cover some simulation averaging, uh, some, some solution averaging. So sometimes when you're running a, a case with unsteady flows, you'll have some oscillation in your results. And you want to be able to automatically um, average that out by iteration level. And you can do that automatically within CRCCM um, using a few different features. So the first one there is the use of um, statistics reports. And those can be used to reference a, uh, let me just find it with all my screen. Let's see, forces full cars. So you can have a statistics report and point it at one of your recorded monitors. And that it'll, after a certain iteration, uh, it'll start averaging out all those different results. So you can get um, some average, uh, some average and steady consistent data. Now, in this case, um, it was already well converged before that, but some cases that might not be uh, as, as possible. And you can do the same thing for different scenes, like viewing your velocity or your total pressure coefficient or your pressure coefficient. You can automatically capture all that and um, average it out within star CCM. And that's just using uh, monitors so you go, to, you go to new monitor and then a new uh, field mean, and you can automatically do anything anything you want with that. Really helpful. Next is going to some post-processing things. Now, first thing I had, I'm gonna, a little sneak peek of all that, is a very common thing you can do is, you know, for example, you can do the pressure coefficient. But a handy thing within STAR is that you can automatically have um, your different simulation parameters as annotations within a different scene. So when you export these and move them around, you already know, you always know, you know, what's the different uh, attitude the car was in within that. And from there, all you have to do is just make a report, um, uh, an expression report, and using the built-in syntax and functions within star CCM, just reference that simulation parameter you have, and then create an annotation from the report and then drop that in. And now you I've and then every scene you export um, will be able to have all the handy information of what condition the car is in with that. Another thing that's less common is the use of uh, skin friction, uh, wall shear stress, um, and, the use, and the, the use of uh, line integral convolutions. And this can be a really great way for viewing separated and patched flows on the car for figuring out areas of improvement. And here, you can also edit the color maps within STAR to for example, have your own custom color map that you'd like, or you can also uh, do something like this, where I have a, a pink band at very low values of skin friction that it can use to highlight areas of detached or separated or weak flows um, that can really draw your eye to those areas. Another thing that I found that isn't commonly done is the use of sweeping the total pressure coefficient from the front and back of the car. And that can be done either within Star CCM by viewing the animation live, for example, as I'm doing right now, uh, I can view some stalling, uh, some uh, vortex burst happening at the end plate area. Or I can export that and create a, a video to view for later. Both really handy things. One really great feature is the use of Design Manager, which is a, a feature within Star CCM for automating design sweeps, which can be used for, for sending to a cluster, for example. Um, so to do that, you just go to the clip in the simulation, uh, right click, uh, create design manager project. Now I already have one already ran and everything. So I'll, I'll skip to that and skip the setup. And from there, um, you can do all sorts of different sweeps. So for example, here I have a, a side slip sweep that I've done, uh, looking at the different side slip angles. And from here, I can control all the different parameters that go into that and automatically sweep, for example, the range from negative 10 to zero degrees of side slip with an increment level. Now, after I've ran that, now I had some mesh issues that I've still have to sort out, uh, so don't mind that, that's a me problem. <laughs> you can see all the different results that are shown and you can change anything within your simulation that you have have set up for post-processing 
you can automatically export that within Design Manager. And with all these different scenes, I can, for example, I've exported the residuals. So if I want to make sure that my traces are um, converged, I can just do the residuals, and that's automatically already there. Within the Design Manager project, I can do the forces, make those, make sure those are converged, and also export scenes, for example, the skin friction coefficient that I covered earlier. And within here, you can also do some post-processing of those sweeps. Uh, for example, I've looked at the data, the error balance um, within um, simulation um, compared to size slip angle. And you can, again, make these really handy plots within Design Manager for all sorts of different things. And then all this data can be exported to uh, a, a lab time simulation model to really have the most, uh, most accurate and dynamic information of the car as possible. And all this is really simple because now that all this automation is set up using the parameters and geometry operations earlier, it's just a matter of, of running something, sending it to a cluster, and then within half a day, getting you know, uh, an error map that you can use um, for your lab time simulation. And that's that's pretty much it. Um, I covered a lot. Um, it was it was quite fast. Um, a lot of this, the finer details, you can get information on how to use the function syntax with Star CCM. It's all in the um, the Star CCM uh, user manual, which is lots of really great information in there. Um, and I can use to fill in some of the gaps for the things that I had to gloss over today. So that's it for me. Very brief overview. So I will hand it back to uh, Virginia. Thank you, uh, David. Uh, so that was uh, very uh, interesting. Um, so we have uh, a few questions now because uh, our um, yeah our presentations um, are now ended. Uh, so I think we can uh, open up uh, the floor uh, to some more questions. Um, so uh i will just uh turn my uh, camera uh, back on um so le let me go through uh some of the questions that we have uh here uh maybe we can start uh, already with you uh devin maybe uh, because you were the last one to present uh, so one question uh that i see uh here is um how did you learn about star system plus uh did you have lectures or did you do it on your own You're muted, David. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so for me, I got comfortable with Star CCM just by using the um, built-in tutorials within the software. Um, I found the tut tutorials were um, a really great way to learn all the different mechanics. And from there, I, I kind of got my grips, and I can just start to explore all the different things. So they're, they're really great. They, they, they kind of tell you everything you need to know um, about you know how to do the tutorials. Um, there's no kind of... Uh, unknown parts of them, um, very well written, and they kind of walk you through a lot of the different mechanics you can use. And a lot of that was also um, personal exploration. You know, I've, I've been using Star for about five years, so I've kind of built a, kind of built up a lot of comfort with the software from that, just from walking around and kind of viewing different things and kind of trying to figure out what everything does. And from there, you have all those different building blocks, building blocks that you can use to put together uh, to create a really great simulation. Okay, um, thank you. And um, how long uh, does it take to run that sweep study? Yeah, so that sweep study um, on a cluster of 180 cores, I think it was about half a day, um, 10 simulations in there. So quite fast. Um, and yeah, so it, it, it's, it's quite fast. And it could have been a lot faster if I had been a little bit more um, specific with my convergence criteria uh, yeah. to kind of uh, stop things a little bit earlier once I know the forces are converged, which is, which is another handy feature. You know, you don't have to have it run until 500 iterations. You can uh, have an asymptote monitor. You can kind of measure uh, if, you know, your force follows are converging to an asymptote and then automatically solve the simulation early to save you some time. Yeah, and I think it also depends a lot on the size uh, of your mesh and your problem uh, in general. So th this is something that uh, you will need to take into account as a CFD engineer. Um, so uh, when you showed the uh, downforce versus the uh, side slip uh, angle diagram, was each point uh, corresponding to one simulation? Yeah, so each point of each one of those is one of the different um, design design points within the simulation. Uh, there are a few points missing um, because I had some mesh errors I still have to root out. But um, yeah, each one of those is uh, its own simulation. 
Okay. Um, so let me, uh, there is a new question uh, just now. Uh, is there a way that we can analyze the uh, post-processing scenes uh, really quickly? Uh, so teams do spend a lot of time uh, usually when post-processing and uh, it can be a bit confusing when comparing six or seven configurations. So wh what's your experience there? Yeah, so with that, um, there's a few different ways. So you can export them um, as a hard copy and kind of flip back and forth between them in Windows. Um, or and, and for creating those export, uh, exporting, um, either you can export them within Design Manager and automatically have those files available to you. Or if you're doing things manually, um, you can use macros within CM and automatically export uh, all the different scenes and record yourself doing that and then automatically do it after the fact. So there's a few different ways to go around that. Yes. Um, so I don't think I need to, uh, to add uh, uh, more uh, to what you just said. Um, so I think we have a question now for uh, Thomas or Christopher. Uh, how long, uh, it's a, a very specific question, how long uh, does it take to identify the uh, parameters using the uh, battery uh, identification uh, toolbox? So I guess this is uh, referred to uh, Sim Center Amazing uh, specifically. And Christopher, if or Thomas, if you want to unmute yourself, yes, of course, I can take this question. Um, so back a few years ago, uh, it took like several hours, maybe, and um, from what I usually hear from from some. Um, some companies is that it may take even uh, days for them to to find good parameterizations. Um, however, uh, thanks to new developments and enhancement of the performance of the battery identification system, it takes now only yeah like minutes, um, which is super fast, <laughs> and this by um, maintaining accuracy by because that's of course also um, a goal to to have a good accuracy and um, yeah having it fast and within yeah minutes that's actually yeah, super fast now yes uh, it is indeed uh and where can you uh where can you run it uh i guess in what type of hardware uh, this i guess this is the question um yeah on a common laptop like uh like on a private laptop it's not like um with cfd that you need uh, large clusters with a lot of cores um um, of course, there's also the option if you run many system simulations um, that it's uh, it's faster on a cluster. But usually, since also the simulations take minutes or maybe seconds, depends depending on the on the model and, and the level of detail. And um, but for the parameterization um, and identification in, in AMSIM, um, a, a common laptop. Um, is sufficient. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you, Christopher. Uh, so a more generic question that came very uh, early. Um, if this webinar uh, will be recorded, so this webinar is actually uh, recorded and will be available on the webinar hub on YouTube, uh, and will be also circulated to all the registrant, uh, registrants uh, after the after this event. So if you if you have missed something, that you will have the opportunity to uh, to watch it uh, again. Um, okay, so maybe this is a question that uh, Thomas uh, might be able to answer. Um, so if you were to work on this project again, uh, what could you improve? Um, so there are many options to improve um, still and to do um, even more to um, do more with that method. So um, I mean, improving method is always possible. You can always improve something. But um, I think more uh, important is what we can now do with the battery model. Um, so we can, as I said, we can use the battery model for, for example, for um, yeah the the usage in in VCUs or in online controllers. Um, but if we, for example, wanted to um, improve it in that way that we um, reduce the um, the time on the clusters, for example, and we don't want to have the CFD, which is um, quite quite large um, to compute, um, we could also go back and um, say we want to try to um, to have the characterization of the CFD 
in a system simulation. So we can now um, try to go back with this um, with the CFD model into the system simulation model. For example, um, SimCenter Amazon offers a neural network builder, and we could um, try to characterize the CFD setup with a neural network, and then um, yeah, just try to to um, run the thermal management or even more a, a whole vehicle um, setup in the system simulation with roughly the same accuracy as in the CFD. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so uh, let me just look for another question. I have the chat box very small on my, <laughs> my laptop, so I need to come very close. Um, so uh, does uh, FiberSim, uh, FiberSim integrate with NX? Uh, maybe uh, Chris, you want to address this question? Uh, yes, it, it, it does. Um, it sits directly within NX. So you can you can basically take a, a CAD of, of your mold um, and then right there on that CAD, uh, start working on the, um, you know, kind of the design for manufacturing and, um, you know, putting, selecting all the different materials and where it's going to originate and what orientation and do the simulation of the, how that uh, material is going to lay over that um, mold um, and then start looking at any bridging or kind of distortions that you have in the material. But yes, it's, it's directly within NX. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, and maybe I can continue with you then, uh, since I have it here. Uh, there is another question. Um, how uh, was the movement of the wings done in the drug reduction study uh, that was shown? I think this is part of the presentation that you showed uh, at the beginning. Yes, so so David actually ran that simulation, uh, <laughs> um, so he could he could speak a little bit more to it, but yes. at very, very high levels, uh, I believe it was using overset mesh. Yeah. Exactly that. I just had an overset mesh, and then I used uh, functions to kind of uh, specify the rotation of those flaps uh, within within the simulation. Yeah. The the cool thing for those that aren't familiar with overset mesh, it it basically allows you to have um, sets of uh, individual regions for each of those wings, and they just literally move on top of hence the name overset mesh. Uh, a background static mesh. Um, and it just basically cuts out the cell so that it can kind of make that movement um, without needing to con continuously remesh the, the simulation. Uh, thank you. Uh, and I have another question for, uh, I think it was for uh, David. Um, so what was the mesh size, to have an idea probably, uh, since you talked about the uh, computational time, uh, what was the mesh size of the simulation that you showed to us? Yeah, that's a good question. It would be worth mentioning. So with that, I used uh, 40 million polyhedral cells. Um, and that was kind of based on RAM requirements uh, for my simulation. So that uses about 200 gigabytes of RAM uh, on my workstation. So that's about what I'm able to do within the resources that I have. Yeah. And, and with there, I was still getting convergence within about three hours, um, which is quite fast. Uh, and once you combine it with a cluster that can really handle even that larger cases, uh, you, get, you get some really great um, uh, results in the end. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think we have time maybe for another question. It's going to be only two minutes left. Um, so how did the uh, UCF automate the design exploration cases in Star System Plus? Uh, I guess maybe uh, Chris can take this question. Right. Um, so they basically used the, um, what was kind of the precursor to the design manager, but uh, it, it, it operates in very, very kind of uh, a very, very similar fashion to the uh, design manager, uh, like David was mentioning. But um, yeah, they just basically, they had pre-built in their, their CAD. Um, they kind of used a combination of um, imported geometry that wasn't really going to change. And they built out the rest of their geometry, their wings and all the aero bodies and stuff that was uh, going to change uh, in Star System Plus. And they use all those parameters to feed into the design manager. So they're able to put all the input parameters, specify what outputs were objectives, you want to maximize, minimize, so on and so forth, uh, all the data that they want to collect. And then they put it up on, um, I want to say it was a stable core cluster um, and, uh, and ran the analysis, so. 
Okay, uh, okay. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so uh, maybe we can have time for another uh, for another question. And I I like this uh, question as well because it's uh, also a bit more uh, general. Um, so this is either maybe for Thomas or uh, David. So how your um, F, uh, Formula student experience uh, helped you with your uh, next step after uni? Yeah, at least for me, um, with with you know where, where I'm going afterwards, it was a lot of my interviews just kind of based on different aerodynamics experience, and um, a lot of times there's showing us you know some some showing us some simulations in there, and and with that having the resources available to kind of explore CFD over these years um, allowed me to really nail some interview questions as a result of that. So yeah, it's it's just been absolutely foundational for everything every every opportunity that I've had um, just doing CFD. Um, using Star CCM within Formal SE, which is why I'm such a big advocate of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for your uh, for sharing your experience. Um, so I don't know if Thomas, you want to uh, add anything uh, to that. Um, yeah. Just I, I would say um, the all the experience with uh, Sim Center um, software was kind of an entrance ticket to any kind of industry experience. Um, for example, the internship or the PhD even. So uh, you don't need this um, starting phase of three months to learn the, so the software. If you have learned in, in your um, uh, at your time in, uh, in your time at university, uh, you're always um, a, a big step ahead. I think I lost. Uh, did I lose? Uh, did I lose the connection? Or can you still hear me? we can hear you okay so maybe we lost thomas um okay uh, too bad uh but i think yeah we we heard uh, part of the question um okay so uh we really uh run out of time uh, now i hope you did enjoy uh, this uh, this webinar so if you missed something or if your question um was unanswered uh we will follow up uh we have your contact if you shared it with us so we'll we'll make sure that we'll uh, we'll get back to you uh, so thank you very much uh everyone uh and i hope to um see you soon maybe uh, some face-to-face uh, -face, uh event uh, finally so thank you <laughs>